Welcome to this class on Neuroscience of Human Movement. In this class, we will discuss parietal and premotor cortex. This is part 2 of our discussion on parietal and premotor cortex. So, in today's class, we will be talking about uh, how objects location in space is represented in cortical area, something that we discussed in the previous class and the crucial role of the intraparietal area and uh, the parietofrontal pathways involved in reaching and grasping and how different sets of neurons respond to different types of stimuli. For example, tactile and visual stimuli in the intraparietal area, there are neurons dedicated for different types of uh, stimuli and uh, motor plans for reaching. Of course, the idea that uh, Newtonian physics alone cannot explain the cortical mechanisms that underlie motor planning. Right. Something that we discussed in the previous class is the notion of near space. The space that is closest to my body is called as near space and the space that I can reach by extending my limbs is called as peripersonal space or reaching space and the space that I can view, but not necessarily reach without making leg movements of course, without actually taking a walk for example, if I am not able to reach then that space is called as far space or extra personal space. And as I mentioned that these areas or these maps are encoded in different regions. So, there are uh, independent maps of these three regions in different regions of the brain. So, that is something that we discussed in the previous class. So, of particular interest for us in this discussion is the intraparietal area. It turns out that uh, that is the intraparietal region and uh, specific regions within the intraparietal region contribute to specific function, something that we will very briefly discuss in this class. Right. For example, there is an area here right, that is called as the VIP area. VIP means ventral intraparietal area, not very important person, but rather ventral intraparietal area or the neurons in the ventral intraparietal area. Right. And these neurons have reciprocal projections or reciprocal connections with the AIF 4 or the ventral premotor area. Okay. And uh, what does this uh, area F 4 itself uh, do? Right. F 4 or the ventral premotor uh, region actually has visual receptive fields that are anchored to specific body parts. So, that means that um, this particular region has something to do with uh, how or the state of the particular part of the body. So, it turns out that uh, when the eyes are making a movement, but not the body parts, it turns out that these set of neurons are not active, but uh, they are active when the specific region of the body is actually moving. So, that means, these are more related to the motor function. So, they are in the visual receptive field, however, they are more active during actions of specific regions of the body. Okay. So, this is the uh, VAP set of neurons and what is also present is the reciprocal connections between uh, the other regions such as PEC and uh, dorsal premotor cortex and uh, how areas in F, uh, F1 and uh, F4 are having reciprocal connections. Some of these that we will discuss in future slides. Right. When it comes to grasping though, right, anterior uh, intraparietal uh, neurons and the so called PFG neurons, they are called as PFG neurons, is the name of the neurons. They are uh, believed to be responsible for 
hand movements. Hand movements means movements within the hand, not reaching movements. Reaching movements involve movements of the arm, whereas the AAP and PFG neurons are uh, believed to contribute for hand movements, right? And um, as I mentioned, uh, the area F4 is active when the particular part of the body moves, but not necessarily when the eyes move. So, vision is something that is going to affect this less than uh, actual movement, right? And also, it is believed that uh, area F5 has a set of neurons that uh, can coordinate the hand to mouth movements, right? Eating evolutionarily a very important activity for survival is it not. So, there are special neurons that are dedicated for this activity uh, the hand to mouth uh, movements. Also it is very well known of course, we have had several discussions in great detail about how the primary motor cortex or uh, the area that is uh, just rostral to the central celsus right has a very large disproportionate representation of hand or the R has a large number of neurons that control hand function right. We also saw the importance of corticomotor neurons or those motor neurons that provide monosynaptic projections to alpha motor neurons that control the finger function is it not something that we saw in previous classes. So, importantly M1 has a large representation of hand and area F5 has uh, specific neurons dedicated for hand to mouth movements right and uh, anterior intraparietal uh, neurons and the PFG neurons are believed to be responsible for hand movements right. Also note that there are sets of neurons whose uh, field of uh, activity are can be tactile or can be visual. So, what is presented here is a neuron whose field is whose tactile field is here. Note that tactile fields are presented in orange and visual fields are presented in purple right. So, this is the tactile field of, a, of one neuron this is a tactile field of a different neuron is it not. The purple regions though indicate the indicate the visual fields for a different sets of neurons. Note that there may be directional preferences within these neurons. Some of these neurons may have specific directional preferences or in other words may be involved in movements in a particular direction, but not the opposite direction also this is another thing. Note this is something that we saw in the previous class. Uh, where we discussed the work of uh, Chargopoulos, where we discussed how uh, activity of uh, population of neurons in the primary motor cortex encode or predict the direction of movement right. Here also this is true there are neurons that have specific directional tuning associated with it right. Also receptive fields of neurons in uh, region F4 for example, can be three dimensional for example, like that for example, like that etcetera right. So, these are receptive fields of different sets of neurons. Note the net behavior of the organism is a combination of activity of all these neurons is it not. This is not a single neuron the, the animal has millions of neurons here what we present is the receptive field of a smaller subset of those neurons is it not. So, just presenting the various possibilities here right. Also Richard Anderson and his colleagues have uh, found that um, reach related areas of the parietal cortex is very important for specifying the target, but not in how the action is to be performed that is the target how you go there is beyond the scope of parietal area right. So, encoding of the location of the target is a crucial function of this region, but uh, exactly how that region will be reached or that particular target will be reached 
is something that is not encoded that is not uh, cared for by this region which is the parietal region right. And also note that this is in the coordinate system or in the frame of reference of the gaze not necessarily in the absolute coordinate system or not necessarily in the body centered coordinate system. So, this is in reference to the I reference uh, frame right I as in not I a lot of people have the I reference frame this is not the reference frame I am talking about I am talking about E Y E I reference frame right. So, this encoding of uh, target location happens in the frame of reference of the eye right and uh, neuronal activity actually does not vary with the position of the limb, but it does vary with the direction of gaze. If the direction of gaze is in one particular uh, direction, uh, but the um, limb is in some position. So, depending on the direction of gaze the activity will vary. So, that means that there are independent neurons that encode the target in the gaze direction frame of reference right. Also importantly cortical mechanisms cannot uh, be explained by merely using Newtonian physics right. Let us take this for a moment and uh, understand what this means. We are organisms who in some sense obey laws of physics is it not. So, just because we are independent organisms it is not like we can violate Newton's laws right. For example, if you jump off the first floor you will fall down and uh, get injured right. So, that means we do obey Newton's laws that I mean trivially even while walking we obey New Newton's laws. So, we do obey Newton's laws. But the question is not that the question is does the cortical system inherently solve the Newtonian equations internally does it solve the Newtonian equations. Now, that is a different question right. It turns out that our behavior correlates well with the solutions of Newtonian uh, mechanics, but that does not necessarily mean that our brain is explicitly computing solutions to Newton's equations these are two different things is it not. So, in, in other words the actual actions that we make is based on some emergent properties of the dynamic interaction between the central nervous system and the body and the body and the environment. So, a lot of dynamic interactions going on between these two systems right and what happens as the outcome is an emergent outcome right. But this is not dependent on the formalisms and the first principles of physics or mechanics right. So, we teach in the department of applied mechanics this might be surprising for you to know that I am saying that human movements are not actually the outcome of mechanics. I am not saying that they, they do not uh, follow mechanics or rules of mechanics or the laws of mechanics they do, but the actual uh, movements that are made are dependent on factors other than the laws of physics and it just turns out that the results the outcomes correlates quite well or in other words we do not explicitly or the central nervous system does not internally solve uh, Newton's equations explicitly right. So, in other words um, um, it is not like a physical M A and then there is a M and acceleration that is computed right that is not what happens. Right. So, what happens is probably an emergent outcome important uh, this. So, this is emergent dynamic mechanical properties of the system that uh, is uh, encoded that is uh, that determines the outcome. But since we do live in constant interaction with the physical world and the physical world or the inanimate world follows uh, Newton's laws a lot of our actions or all of our actions also follow Newton's laws, but we do not solve f is equal to m a. f is equal to m a is true for us, but it is not that we are computing this right. So, that is the point. So, we cannot merely take Newton's uh, laws 
and uh, say these are the equations that are solved by the cortical uh, mechanisms or the cortical system to achieve movements right. So, that is not what is happening. It is definitely tempting to use this as uh, principles that the central nervous system may be following right. So, essentially uh, it is easy to say that this is what the central nervous system is uh, doing right because the methods and approaches in physics and mechanics and engineering are relatively well developed for example, in control theory right. Uh, the specific approaches and methods are very well developed in comparison for example, with uh, neuroscience or biology right. So, a problem that comes with borrowing terminology from other disciplines is that it is tempting to use uh, the results in those disciplines or interpretations in those disciplines as what happens in the original discipline or for example, the interpretations in physics are not necessarily true from the biological viewpoint right. So, in summary the objects location uh, in uh, is represented in uh, cortical areas in multiple independent uh, regions right and the crucial role of the intraparietal area and actually we mentioned two of these the VAP and the AAP area and the specific uh, periodofrontal pathways that are involved in reaching and grasping and uh, we also said there are spe special neurons in area F i that are uh, dedicated to hand to mouth movements and uh, there are sets of neurons that are uh, that independently encode tactile and visual stimuli in the interparietal areas and uh, the direction of gaze for example, or uh, uh, parietal region encodes uh, plants in the direction of gaze uh, based coordinate system right and cortical mechanisms cannot be explained by using Newtonian physics. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.